Hey, in this episode of Open at Microsoft, uh, we'll be discussing about caching with a fantastic open source library named Fusion Cache. Stay tuned for more. Hey, Jody, super nice to have you here uh, at Open Source at Microsoft. Uh, I know that you have created a fantastic library that I use every day, Fusion Cache. Uh, so I Really looking forward to have you explaining all about it. Uh, so let's start uh, right away. What is Fusion Cache and why you have created it? Yeah, uh, first of all, thank you for having me here. So Fusion Cache is a caching library, uh, as the name suggests, that uh, mm, tries to ease the pain of working with uh, data access and caching in particular. So the idea came up to me uh, after years and years in my career of having to deal with all different types of caches, uh -huh. and I mean memory cache, distributed cache, HTTP caching, CDN, softline caches, all these things. So I tried to wrap them up together in a nice package that had a kind of a uniform and consolidated way of doing things hmm. with clear names and a clear access pattern and stuff like that. So uh, I wanted to give back to the open source community that gave us a lot uh, to all of us. So mm -hmm. that was like my way of doing it. And so some years ago, I took the plan and said, okay, why not? Let's try to do one open source project. And this is it. No, that's nice. So you're saying it's more than caching because, uh, you know, as a developer, when I think about caching, immediately, usually I think about uh, Redis or something like that. But yeah. here you're saying uh, <clears throat> you have created a library that is actually a cache on its own, my understanding, but it can also use any of these additional caching uh, engines that we already have or, or it's a kind of a replacement? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It, it can be both an in-memory cache only, mm. so kind of like iMemory cache in .NET, mm -hmm. uh, and actually right now it uses it underneath, but it can mm. also work as, a, uh, as what is called um, a hybrid cache, meaning a multi-level oh. cache. Yeah, so basically you can um, plug it in any existing implementation of iDistributed cache, which in .NET is the common abstraction of a distributed yeah. cache. And so basically, we will use that as a second level and we'll automatically handle the, the I call it the dance between the two layers. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, cool. so, so that basically, you can get the best of both worlds because if you do a, like a business one-on-one graph uh, chart, you have basically the pros of memory cache and some cons, and they are the opposite of the pros and cons of the distributed cache. So you mix them yeah. together, yeah, and you get the best of both worlds. That is cool. That is cool. So as a developer, I can start with Fusion Cache, use it locally or in memory, and then when I realize I may, I, I may need more, I can just plug in an additional uh, caching engine that is a distributed engine and just use it, but basically without changing my code. That's That's my understanding. Yeah, exactly. One of oh. the things that some people uh, had to do is that they started with caching and they use memory cache because, yeah, I mean, it's huh. local, it's, it's cool, okay. But then they can only so much scale vertically up to a certain point, and then yeah. you have to scale horizontally multi-node. And in that case, they usually switch to i distributed cache, but in that case, the abstraction changes and they have to I change see. all the pieces in the code, all their, their mm. cache.get, etc. So it's a lot of work. And the, pad, the access pattern changes. Also, the super cache uh, has some pros, but also some cons because it is distributed. So it means that it um, it's uh, like a, uh, it has the, the the problem of the fallacies of distributed companies. So they, mm -hmm. they are called these ways. Basically, latency is not zero. Network is yeah. not always there. All these things. Yeah. So memory and, and distributed together give you the best of both worlds. That's and cool. You don't have to change anything in your existing code. So you can start memory and go distribute it or mix both ways. Uh, that, that's fantastic. Do you have any code that I can see and that we can share with uh, people watching the show? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, I love I to see the code. I prepared a very small demo. Nice. Very, very small. It fits in the screen, so it should be mm -hmm. <laughs> nice to follow. So basically, it uses uh, minimal APIs, minimal endpoints in, in ASP.NET. And basically, it set up a, a fake database, which we can see it's basically just a class that uh, delays for five seconds, uh, simulating yeah. a slow database call, and then returns a, a random number. Uh, then it set up Fusion Cache in this piece. Uh, which basically say add fusion cache to the services, the usual dependency Easy. injection way, and some default entry options, so called, which are basically the default uh, options for each entry in the cache. In this case, I set up one second cache. So this is what is commonly known as micro caching, meaning very, very small cache. Mm -hmm. And this is, is nice because sometimes people think, Oh, I don't know, you know, cache data for like 10 minutes, stuff like that. What if the data yeah. changes and stuff like that? Notification, which by the way, Fusion Cache handles automatically for you, but that's another thing. And but we just one second is just really a no-brainer. Just why not? Like it's very rare that you cannot have one second of cache. So what I would yeah. like to show 
is is this. So it's a simply it's a simple endpoint that returns mm -hmm. the get value from database. Now, if yeah. on the right hand side of the screen we have K6, so I prepared mm -hmm. a K6 test, which uh, is a stress testing tool, and while it is running, it will take about 20 seconds. Oh, right, it's an error, but it's correct because I haven't it's started timing out? the. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I am sorry. Right. Yeah, okay. yeah, I guess the cache yeah. can, can fix that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, okay, let's run it. It's going. So, this is the test plan for K6. Basically, it's a mm -hmm. ramp up of two seconds up to 10 virtual users, then five seconds up to 1,000 virtual users, then 10 seconds of sustained yeah. load to 1,000 users, and then a ramp down to zero users. Yeah, yeah. Now, get back to the code. Here, almost finished. What we can see right now, we will see that basically the the HTTP duration, which uh, is here, and you can see that the average, yeah. minimum, median, max, and and the percentiles are basically all five seconds. Why? Yeah. Because there's no cache, and the database call, even though it's simulated, takes five seconds. Now, by simply commenting out the the call to the database and uncommenting the call to the cache, we where by the way, here you can see. It hired, so it's exactly the same code. Basically, we simply say cache, get or set, give it a cache key, and the okay. call back. So when the data is not in the cache, what should should cache do to get the data to the database? We simply restart the web server. And we just like that, we rerun K6 mm -hmm. again. And we can see, we will see the numbers uh, drastically uh, um, getting slower, uh, smaller and smaller because of caching. Now, one thing that I like to say while it is running is that on top of being a cache, it also protects you from the most common problem in the caching world, which is known mm. as cache stampede, uh, which is something that some people think imemorycaching.net protects you from because there's a method called get or create, mm -hmm. but it doesn't protect you. So basically, very shortly, uh, cache stampede means uh, if a thousand requests comes in for the same value and it's not in the cache, all of them will go to the database at the same time. I and see. all will populate the cache, I see. So it's a waste of resources. With cache stampede protection, which is built into Fusion Cache and you don't have to do anything, you only one will get will go to the database. And just to be clear, only one per cache key. So product one, product two, they will not like lock of each course. other. Of course. Now, the, That's cool. The, the K6 run finished, and we can see the average well, much came better. from 5 seconds to 335 milliseconds, so definitely better. The minimum is 503 microseconds. Second, so, yeah, because that's for yeah, memory. Alpha, yeah, alpha millisecond, yeah. Yeah. And then the median, the max, the max, of yeah. course, is 5 seconds. 5 because, seconds. I mean, the first one will go to the yeah. database. And then we have like a, a pretty cool. five percentile of 400 and something milliseconds. Yeah. So this is a very small demo, but it's something that I think can be effective because you don't have to... Yeah even think about having like one second cache is really a problem. So by just doing that, these are yeah, the yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 moving from non-cached version to a cached version is literally like two line of code. Uh, basically, yeah. you specify you specify the key and basically the okay. the function you want to be called uh, when uh, the cache expires, right? Yeah, that's and then, called the factory. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then fusion uh, fusion cache takes care of all the stampede problem. And uh, I, I I know that on GitHub you you have a list of other problems that are prevented yeah. by, by fusion yeah. cache. So. Um, oh, that's amazing. So, out of all the nice features that Fusion Cache has, what is mm -hmm. your favorite if you have one? Mm, nice one. Ha, uh, they are a lot. <laughs> uh, sure. That, well, you know what? If I will answer you this at the beginning, probably I would have said face safe and soft art timeouts. Basically, it's it, it's the two main features that protects uh, us from uh, uh, slow database calls and the transfer okay. failures. Okay, nice. But that was the beginning. More recently, I would have said probably auto recovery, which is a big feature that I'm working on a lot and I'm still working okay. on. Which is basically self healing. So when something bad happens uh, in production, like on the distributed cache or the backplane or whatever, it will automatically try to fix that together. Uh, and and wow. the, the, the demo I usually do with the, the small application I call Simulator, which is included in the source code of, of the, the solution, uh, is nice because you can see everything destructing in production going red. And then as soon as you get back like a Redis or, or main cache or whatever, you automatically get 
all green. So it's, it's really oh, nice. good to see, to see, even if I so, say so myself. But I think the most, the, the best one, the, the one I prefer the most is like an overarching theme of uh, developer experience and, uh, and Fusion Cash um, being, it, it just works, so yeah. to speak. Huh? So what I I think I tried to what I tried to do and I think I got it uh, in the most ways uh, and also what the community told me mostly about is that it's really nice and easy to use mm -hmm. and you well, you basically just if you're used to memory cache you swap it out for fusion cache it? and it's the same nice. but you get protected from cache stampede and then slowly you can add more features you can enable phase safe timeouts you can enable the distributed cache all without changing your existing code. Now, oh, one fantastic. thing I can I can show you is um, is yeah. uh, very quickly here where where I say I set up Fusion Cache. So add Fusion Cache first line. Mm -hmm. Second one is I configure the the default entry options. If I go here and I do with distributed cache, oh, I can see with, yeah, just like that. I can <laughs> pass an, an instance of any I distributed cache, or I can use the I to resolve one or whatever. And these, which are my thousands and thousands of will not change code. In, yeah, will not change. That's Basically. fantastic. Absolutely, and I can even you do it like programmatically, meaning uh, oh, I'm oh. I'm locally, I uh, locally I just use memory. I don't need right. in development uh, a distributed cache because I know that in production everything will be the same. So yeah. I can work locally only one level, and in production with two levels. That's very nice. Oh, that's great. Uh, and it's even better that everything is open source so people can also contribute if they want or uh, or just, you know, see, you know, all the techniques that you use to make this happen. Yeah. So, oh, and also the, the logo is fantastic, I tell you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. Uh, so to wrap up, uh, not only uh, the link to the um, repository will be available in the description, also an example that uses a, a Fusion Cache with the real database Azure SQL in my case, uh, yep. that shows how, again, improvement, uh, it's really easy to be obtained uh, just with one second cache. You can go from a few query per second to thousand and yeah. uh, I, I I think that's all uh, it was great to have you in this episode Fusion Cache is great uh, if you are Thank watching you. this episode go and try Fusion Cache out right now it's super easy to use and just helps you to create more uh, scalable solution and with that see you in the next episode thanks so much <laughs>